as one of a thousand elements of my own testimony of the divinity of the Book of Mormon, I submit this as yet one more evidence of its truthfulness. In this their greatest and last hour of need, I ask you, would these men blaspheme before God by continuing to fix their lives, their honor, and their own search for eternal salvation on a book and by implication a church and a ministry they had fictitiously created out of whole cloth? Never mind that their wives are about to be widows and their children fatherless. Never mind that their little band of followers will yet be houseless, homeless, and friendless, and that their children will leave footprints of blood across frozen rivers and an untamed prairie floor. Never mind that legions will die and other legions live, declaring in the four quarters of this earth that they know the Book of Mormon and the church which it espouses it to be true. Disregard all of that and tell me whether in this hour of death these two men would enter the presence of their eternal judge, quoting from and finding solace in a book which, if not the very word of God, would brand them as impostors and charlatans until the end of time. They would not do that. They were willing to die rather than deny the divine origin and the eternal truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. For 179 years this book has been examined and attacked denied and deconstructed, targeted and torn apart, like perhaps no other book in modern religious history, perhaps like no other book in any religious history. And still it stands. Failed theories about its origins have been born, parroted, and died from Ethan Smith to Solomon Spalding to deranged paranoid to cunning genius. None of these frankly pathetic answers for this book has ever withstood examination because there is no other answer than the one Joseph gave as its young unlearned translator. In this I stand with my own great-grandfather, who said simply enough, no wicked man could write such a book as this, and no good man would write it, unless it were true, and he were commanded of God to do so. I testify that one cannot come to full faith in this latter-day work and thereby find the fullest measure of peace and comfort in these our times until he or she embraces the divinity of the Book of Mormon and the Lord Jesus Christ of whom it testifies. If anyone is foolish enough or misled enough to reject 531 pages of a heretofore unknown text teeming with literary and Semitic complexity without honestly attempting to account for the origin of those pages somehow, especially without accounting for their powerful witness of Jesus Christ and the profound spiritual impact that witness has had on what is now tens of millions of readers. If that's the case, then such persons, elect or otherwise, have been deceived. And if they leave this church, they must do so by crawling over or under or around the Book of Mormon to make their exit. In that sense, the book is what Christ himself was said to be, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, a barrier in the path of one who wishes not to believe in this work. 
witnesses, even witnesses who were for a time hostile to Joseph, testified to their death that they had seen an angel and had handled the plates. Quote, they have been shown unto us by the power of God and not of man, they declared. Wherefore, we know of a surety that the work is true. Now, I did not sail with the brother of Jared in crossing an ocean and settling in a new world. I did not hear King Benjamin speak his angelically delivered sermon. I did not proselyte with Alma and Amulek nor witness the fiery death of innocent believers. I was not among the Nephite crowd who touched the wounds of the resurrected Lord, nor did I weep with Mormon and Moroni over the destruction of an entire civilization. But my testimony of this record and the peace it brings to the human heart is as binding and unequivocal as was theirs. Like them, I give my name unto the world to witness unto the world that that which I have seen and like them, I lie not. God bearing witness of it. I ask that my testimony of the Book of Mormon and all that it implies, given today under my oath and my office, be recorded by men on earth and angels in heaven. I hope I have a few years left in my last days. But whether I do or do not, I want it absolutely clear. When I stand before the judgment bar of God, that I declared to the world in the most straightforward language I could summon that the Book of Mormon is true, that it came forth the way Joseph said it came forth and was given to bring happiness and hope to the faithful in the travail of the last days. My witness echoes that of Nephi who wrote part of the book in his last days and I quote, Hearken unto these words, and believe in Christ. And if ye believe not in these words, believe in Christ. And if you shall believe in Christ, you shall believe these words, for they are the words of Christ. And they teach all men that they should do good. If they're not the words of Christ, judge ye, for Christ will show you with power and great glory that they are his words at the last day. Brothers and sisters, God always provides safety for the soul and with the Book of Mormon he has again done that in our time. Remember this declaration by Jesus himself, whoso treasureth up my word shall not be deceived and in the last days Neither your heart nor your faith will fail you. Of this I earnestly testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.